So we continue with chapter two. Next model that we're going to study in this chapter, it's going to be production possibilities frontier. And production possibilities frontier is going to be a graph that going to show us the combination of two goods that economy can produce taking into consideration available resources. So can, it's very important word over here, please pay attention, not that we have to produce or not that we want to produce or might, or might to might to produce. Okay, so this is production possibilities frontier. This is um, a graph that going to show us the combination of two goods that economy can produce, taking into consideration available resources. So we're going to take a very, very simple example. In our economy, we're going to produce two goods. It's going to be computers and units of wheat. Um, we're going to have resource that is labor. And we're going to have this available resources, 50,000 labor hours available in order to produce these two goods, computers and units of wheat. Okay, so once again, our labor hours, this is our available resource. So going to this um, graph, what are we going to do? We're going to take um, this 50,000 labor hours and we're going to allocate it in different combination between production of our computers and wheat. So. For example, let's suppose, let's suppose that we decided, I'm going to go ahead and think it's going to put it, okay, it's going one by one. So let's suppose we're going to allocate all our 50 labor hours on production of only units of computers. Our question is how many hours can we spend in order to produce units of wheat? And the answer is going to be zero, isn't it? Because once again, once again, we only have 50,000 labor hours available. That was our given resource. Guys, remember, once again, this is our um, just, you know, random example. It doesn't apply to a real, actually, you know, data in our economy. That's a very simple example that we use um, so it can be easier for us to analyze. So, therefore, if we decided to allocate all 50,000 labor hours on production of only computers, then how many hours can we spend in order to produce units of wheat? Zero, isn't it? So I'm going to keep going. They showing you this combination. Okay, I'm going to fill this out, but we're going to look at this production in a second. Okay, so let's let's go back to this employment of labor hours. So let's suppose that we actually decided, well, we're taking this 50,000 labor hours and we actually want to allocate 40,000 hours on production of units of computers. And therefore, how many hours can we use in order to produce units of wheat? It's going to be 10, isn't it? Because once again, altogether, we have 50,000 labor hours available. Guys, you can take this 50,000 labor hours and allocate it between production of these two goods any way you want to. We just using exactly this number because it's easier to calculate and build our graph. So then we can actually take these um, uh, available hours and, you know, split it in half. We're going to spend 25,000 hours on production of computers and 25,000 labor hours on production of units of wheat. Then we decided, well, you know what, we're actually going to try different combination. 10,000 labor hours on production of computers. Therefore, we can use 40,000 labor hours on production of units of wheat and then zero and 50 okay so easy once again you can allocate this 50,000 labor hours any any way you want to now after we did that we're gonna have to calculate if we allocate hours this way how many units okay of computers and units of wheat we will be able to produce so this production is going to tell us about physical units okay this is my physical units um part of the table so in order to calculate that, so we need to take into consideration the data that was given to us. In order to produce one computer, we need to spend 100 labor hours. And in order to produce one ton of wheat, we need to produce 10 labor hours. So if we take 50,000 labor hours, okay, and producing computers, and it takes 100 labor hours to produce one computer, our question is, how many computers can we produce with these 50,000 labor hours? And the answer is going to be 500, isn't it? Once again, how did we get this number? Remember, we took this 
So I'm going just to write it one time and you're going to have to remember and understand. So we took this 50,000 labor hours that we use to produce in computers. And to produce one computer is actually taking us 100 labor hours. So we take this 50,000 divided by 100 labor hours. And therefore, we're going to take this 500 computers or we're going to, to end up with, five, with 500 computers produced. Okay, since we didn't spend any hours on production of units of wheat, we're not producing any units of wheat. Okay, next, if we allocated hours this way, so it means that we are only spending 40,000 labor hours in production of computers. Question is how many computers we will be able to produce? Okay, well, remember, to produce one computer requires us 100 labor hours. How many computers we're going to produce? We're going to produce 400 because we take this 40,000 labor hours. Okay, we're working all together 40,000 labor hours on pre producing of computers. To produce one computer requires us 100 labor hours. How many computers we will be able to produce? Well, you take 40,000 divided by 100 and we're going to end up with 400 computers. Okay, now, we allocated 10,000 at this point, at point B, we allocated 10,000 labor hours on production of units of wheat. How many units of wheat we will be able to produce? Remember, to produce one unit, or they're saying here, one ton of wheat, we need to actually spend 10 labor hours. We need to work 10 hours in order to produce one ton of wheat. So therefore, since we allocated this many hours on production units of wheat, how many units of wheat we will be able to produce? So we take this 10,000 divided by 10 labor hours because it takes us 10 labor hours to produce one unit of wheat. How many units of wheat are we going to end up with? It's actually going to be 1,000. And guys, keep going. We take 2,500 divided by 100. We're going to end up with 250 computers. And if we allocate 25,000 25, hours to producing units of wheat, how many units of wheat we're going to produce in this point? It's going to be 2,500. And there were one, therefore, 104,000 and 0 and 5. So once again, this is we calculated the production, taking into consideration these numbers and taking into, cons into consideration that we allocate our hours between production of two goods this way. Keep going. What are we going to do now? We're going to take this information. So remember, this is our production. We just calculated it, calculated this, and we're going to uh, build production possibilities frontier. Okay, so remember, our production possibilities frontier is going to be a graph that's going to show us the combination of two goods that economy can produce, taking into consideration our available resources. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a graph. This is going to be our computers. This is going to be our units of wheat. Okay, you're welcome to actually take a piece of paper and draw this with me. So for computers, I'm going to choose 100 unit increments. One, two, three, four, five. So this is 100. This is 200. This is 300, 400, and 500. So building this graph is not that complicated, guys. You see it one time, and you you can probably actually right now build it on your own. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to to uh, draw our production possibilities frontier PPF. So on over here, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. Remember, this is 1,000 for our units of wheat. Then our 2,000, 3,000. 4,000 and 5,000. So how do we build our production possibilities from here? In point A, we're producing 500 computers and zero units of wheat. So where is this point on production possibilities from here? So remember, this is zero. Okay, units of wheat is over here. We're producing zero units of wheat, but at, at this point, we're also producing 500 computers. So therefore, this is going to be the very first point of our production possibilities frontier, right on our X line. Remember, this is X. This is our Y. If you're looking at the algebra, this is Y. This is our X. So therefore, the very first point right on our X line, it's going to be point A over here. 
Okay, keep moving. Point B, at point B we're producing 400 computers and 1000 units of wheat. Where is this point on our graph? So we have 1000 computers, I mean, I'm sorry, 1000 units of wheat and 400 computers. This is our next point. Okay, then we're moving to point C, 250 and 25. So we have over here 250 computers and 2500 units of wheat it's somewhere over here this is going to be so this is b this is going to be our point c uh, point d we're producing 100 computers 4000 units of wheat you can probably already figure out where is the point going to be on our graph so we have 100 computers 4000 units of wheat this is point d and the last point is going to be right over here so guys once again if your graph is very very pretty it's hard for me to draw here on the screen if i'm going to connect all these points okay we're going to have a straight line and this straight line it's going to be our production possibilities frontier so once again what does it show us remember production possibilities frontier is showing us the combination of two goods that economy can produce taking into consideration our available resources we had that 50,000 labor hours we divided that between production of two goods and this is what we actually end up with so guys what is this point on production possibilities actually you know show us so if we're going to take for example this point c okay let's suppose i'm going to take this point c this point c is saying is telling us that at point c we can produce 2500 units of wheat and 250 computers and this is the only combination that we can produce in this point okay if we're going to look at point d at point d because we allocated our resources a certain way at point d we can produce 4000 units of wheat and 100 units of computers and this is the only combination we can produce at point d okay if we take some kind of point somewhere in between let's suppose i don't know this is point x whatever this point x corresponds to okay we can produce this many units of wheat and this many units of computers and at this point this is the only combination that we can produce keep going keep going so let's suppose let's suppose that um we go going to introduce two new points and we're going to have point f and point g and at point f we're producing 100 computers and 3000 units of wheat and at point g we're producing 300 computers and 3500 units of wheat what are we going to do we're going to plot this point on production possibilities frontier and see where we're going to end up with so point f i'm going to take this green um, um pencil corresponds to 100 computers 100 computers is going to be over here and 3000 units of wheat 3000 units of wheat is going to be over here so therefore if we kind of going to meet over here 3000 units of wheat 100 computers this is going to be our point f and for point g okay we producing at point g we producing 300 computers and we producing 3500 units of wheat 3500 units of wheat so therefore point g is actually going to be somewhere over here so we introduced just two new points on our on our graph so point f we actually ended up being over here and point g we actually ended up being over here so what are we going to do next we go into compute how many hours okay we need in order to operate auto or to produce at point f and g okay so guys remember at point f we are producing um i think it was 100 computers okay and guys remember from the previous information in order to produce one computer in order to produce one computer we actually need to spend 100 labor hours isn't it 100 labor hours so therefore in order to produce this 100 computers if we multiply this 100 computers multiply by 100 labor hours this will give us how many labor hours we need to spend in order to produce this 100 computers and then also at point f we produce in some units of wheat isn't it remember i told in the previous powerpoint slide that at point f we're also producing 3000 units of wheat isn't it and remember to produce one unit of wheat it was given to us before we need to spend 10 labor hours 
okay so therefore if we're going to multiply this okay and then add up what are we going to have we're going to have how many labor hours all together we need in order to produce at point f so therefore over here at point f um what do we have we need um okay help me here with my math we need one we need 10,000 labor hours to produce computers and we need 30,000 labor hours to produce our units of weight. So therefore, all together, all together, if we're going to calculate, we're going to have 40,000 labor hours that we need in order to operate at point F. In order to produce this 100 computers and 3,000 units of weight, we need 40,000 labor hours um, to spend. And then remember, at point G, at point G, we're producing, I think it was, um, and I really don't remember how much was it let me see so we produce 350 computers remember to produce one computer require us 100 labor hours once again it was given to us and then at the same point we actually producing guys I'm, I'm sorry it was actually 300 computers I'm going to change this okay and then at this point we're also producing 3500 units of wheat and remember to produce one unit we needed to spend 10 labor hours so therefore if we multiply and add um, it all together so what do we have over here we have 30,000 labor hours necessary to produce 300 computers and then 35,000 labor hours necessary to produce our remember that was for units of wheat isn't it Okay, I did do some kind of little mistake, guys, over here, isn't it? That have to be, uh, no, that's 3,500, that, that's correct. Okay, that's correct. So we're going back, okay? And therefore, if I'm going to add this up all together, we're going to end up with 65,000 labor hours we need in order to produce combination of 300 computers and 3500 units of weight okay so these are the calculations keep going what do we have on the next graph let's analyze these points okay remember we build our point g and point f so once again point f we only need to spend we only need to spend 40,000 labor hours in order to produce this combination of 3000 units of wheat and 100 computers and at point g we need to spend 65,000 labor hours in order to produce the combination of 300 computers and 3500 units of wheat guys what can you tell about this point just look at the graph and tell me what can you kind of like observe do you see that point f is actually inside of production possibilities frontier and in point f we do not use all available hours that we have remember we actually were given 50,000 labor hours to spend on production of computers and units of wheat in point f we spend in only 40,000 labor hours so therefore point f is going to be inefficient okay inefficient point and this in a fee point um i completely okay kind of misspelled over here inefficient okay inefficient point okay so therefore so point f is inefficient point because we don't um spend all labor hours that we're given okay and you see that point f is actually inside inside of production possibilities frontier so guys therefore the rule is you remember this for the exam any points that you're going to have inside of production possibilities frontier it's going to be inefficient points because we don't use all resources that were available in the economy and if we're going to look at point g do you see point g is outside of production possibilities frontier in order to produce this combination of 300 computers and 3500 units of wheat we need to spend 65 thousand labor hours do we have this labor hours this many labor hours available in our economy and the answer is no we were given only 50,000 labor hours so therefore point g is not possible 
point G is not possible, and do you see that this is actually outside of production possibilities frontier? So make a no note of that. Those points that are inside of production possibilities frontier, like point F, they're going to be inefficient and um, they located inside of production possibilities frontier. Those points that are going to be outside of production possibilities frontier, they're going to be not possible because we don't have enough labor hours in order to produce in that point. Okay, one more note. Point G can be possible if we experience an improvement in technology. Okay, so note this for the test. So point G will be possible will be possible if we experience an improvement in technology okay and then what is going to happen our production possibilities frontier is actually going to shift outward okay this is what is going to happen in the economy so guys really quick i'm going to wrap up this video you know what i just noticed that i never indicate that this is actually our units of wheat and this is our units of computers okay so make sure that on all those other powerpoint slides um, that I did, you understand this is our units of wheat and this is our units of computers. All right. Okay, guys, um, you rock, you can crush it, you can understand uh, production possibilities frontier, and um, that's how I explain it if I'm in the face to face classes. Um, so from now on, you need to learn it and you need to know it.